Hey everyone, Graham from Loudwire here with the one and only Tom Morello. Thank I'm you here. so much, man. Thanks very much for having me. Of course, the new project, Atlas Underground, you can get that right now. So, first of all, this is Wikipedia Fact or Fiction. Sure. So I went on to your Wikipedia page, you know, mm. Rage, Audio Slave, sure. all the stuff. Pulled out some stuff. You can tell me if it's fact I, or I fiction. I will confirm or deny. Thank you so much. First of all, because we always do check. Thomas Baptist Morello. That's correct. Born in Harlem, New York. That's correct. Okay, correct. Yeah. They do get that wrong sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it said that at age 13, you joined your first band, which was a Led Zeppelin cover band, and you were the lead singer. That it was not exclusively a Led Zeppelin cover band. Okay, but so Nebula was the name of the it's band. Called Nebula. Nebula. It was a junior high band, and I was the lead singer. It was before my voice changed, so I was able oh. to hit the Robert Plant baby, baby, baby business. What else yeah. did you cover? Uh, there was a little uh, Steve Miller band, a little oh, nice. Bachman BTO, a little Bachman Turner Overdrive. Okay. Um, and I immediately developed lead singer disease as a 13-year-old, oh, really? and I, after a couple of gigs, I was kicked out of the band, and I deserve to be. Ah, okay. Yep. Uh, just strutting your stuff a little I too much. I just thought I didn't need to go to rehearsal anymore or anything ah, like okay. that. okay. But I had a great look. It was, I had like a big afro and like a sort of a John Travolta silk shirt, unbuttoned, Italian horn, a snug slack, wow. and a lot of attitude. Uh, it says that at a mock election at your high school, you campaigned for a fictitious anarchist That's candidate right. named Hugh B. Maxwell, That's who actually came in fourth place. That's correct. That's it was, all, it was all entirely accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was quite a stir. It was quite a stir. Like it was, it was a mock election in, yeah. um, in the 1980 presidential election. Yes. And uh, as a sort of an exercise in real democracy, we ran a candidate that was not one of the traditional ones on the ballot and garnered 14% of the vote. Uh, 14% of the, of the, vote. Of the yeah. vote, not yeah. bad. Better than the, the typical uh, Green Party. That's, cor that's correct, that's know? correct, for a, for a non-existent person. So, so the Anarchy Party. Yeah, it was, was the Anarchy Party of Libertyville Public High School. And it was frowned upon by the administration. They that's thought, a, yeah, it was frowned upon. That's a shame, yeah, well, yeah. as you would expect. Yeah. It. Yeah. All right, so it says that around 1984 is when you started to study the guitar seriously. And then it says that's when you formed a band uh, called The Electric Sheep with Tool guitarist Adam Jones on bass. No, that is, that is not the correct timeline. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Electric Sheep formed in 1982, I believe, and Adam oh. joined, was in that band. And then when I would return home from summers, I, in college I was in different co cover bands, and I'd come home in the summer and The Electric Sheep continued on. Adam Jones was the bass player in The Electric Sheep. Awesome. And it says that that was also a political band. It had, I wrote a political song or two. I wrote, my first political song was called Salvador Death Squad Blues. But it was, the most of the subject matter was uh, very Brett Kavanaugh. I hate to admit it. It was pretty sort of oh, sexist, okay. like punk songs. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, okay, so yeah. just the typical teen rebellion. Typical teen. Eh, there was, I wish there was more rebellion and a little less, you know, sort of. We were all virgins, by the way. So we had sort of, sort of like imaginary, like, <laughs> rock life. We sort of like wrote as if we were Mick Jagger, and we were certainly not. So it says that your mongrel custom, Arm the Homeless Guitar, yeah. has been your main guitar for standard tuning since 1986. However, when you got the guitar, yeah. you hated everything about it. That is absolutely correct. That's yeah. true. I had it made at a... Uh, uh, shop in Hollywood. It was I was ripped off. They just I got my, my first paycheck from work, and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a custom made guitar because yeah. Steve Vai has a custom made guitar, whatever. But of course, I didn't know which fretboard. To, I didn't have any idea. No sure, luthier sure. experience, and so it was a piece of crap, and it was an expensive piece of crap, and I was so disappointed. And I spent years just replacing the neck and ever the only thing that remains from the arm of the homeless guitar is the piece of wood of the body. The and body all the rest yeah. has been changed. Yeah. Wow. So did you paint arm the homeless yourself? I did. I painted I drew it on with a Sharpie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So uh, this one I just had to ask because although we do know your past as a uh, exotic uh, dancer, uh, it says on Wikipedia you went by the moniker of Tom Meat Swinger. That is, that is incorrect. That's that is incorrect. incorrect. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, so yeah, because yeah, I typed yeah. that in. Exotic. And I did you, not yeah. see a quote. Oh, were, you, were you the one that put it on the. <laughs> I was not, but I was like, <laughs> no. there's no way that's true. That but, was not true. That's okay, not, true. not that's the, not true. I've seen that's that true. on many a website. Yeah, I've, yeah, that is, that is. Followed Have me you run a into bit. that? That's as well? followed me around a little bit, but no. Okay, so no. 
Okay. It was a duo. It was like a tandem duo. It was that we would do bachelorette parties, and we had a particular financial goal. We wanted to buy a hot tub for our apartment. Excellent. So that's very exotic dancer like uh, right. sort of need. Um, and we it was we wanted like the right one, the nice one. So we worked, um, and then we retired from the sex trade after we once you got the hot yeah tub. once we got the money for the hot tub yeah yeah yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so it was That's a very short good. tenure in okay, the so world of exotic dancing. Not true with the meat swinger. Brick House was our jam. Though. That was the, I, I mean, that's really the, if you want to make money, that's I read really, about you, that. you go with that. Yeah. I, read it, I read about yeah. that, yes. Uh, it says from 87 to 88, you worked in the office of U.S. Senator Alan Cranston. However, this proved to be a negative experience for you personally, and it's what made you decide to never pursue a career in politics. That's, a, that's accurate. That's true. That's, that's accurate. So what, what was negative what the experience? about it? Uh, one was I really got to see how the sausage was made and how mm. uh, electoral politics were entirely beholden to money. And Senator Cranston, while well, he was a nice guy, and he had, was on the right side of a, lot of a lot of issues, he, when I was with him, the whole job was just calling up rich guys and asking them for money. And he eventually was involved in a thing called the Keating Five scandal, where it was basically trading political favors for money, which is ex whatever yeah, what they all do. But it just it also I you know one time stood up, uh, and some woman called and she was complaining that Mexicans were moving into the neighborhood, and I told her that she was a racist and could go to hell, and I thought I'd done my job for the center. I got yelled at by everybody mm. for weeks afterwards, and I thought if I'm in a job where I can't tell racists to go to hell. I need a different job. So she was a big money donor. I no, no, she was just like a lady. She was like constituent. Lady? Yeah, she was called up. It was pissed. Oh, like wow. the center need to, needs to clean up this neighbor. I was like, that ain't right. Uh, that ain't no, right. That, that, that ain't, ain't right. right. Uh, so it said, "Killing in the name." Uh, it says you created the heavier guitar rips while teaching a student drop D tuning, and you had to stop the lesson to record the riff on the spot. That's right. The one, the main riff. I was uh, teaching a student uh, from a fairly accomplished Hollywood band came to me for some lessons, and I was. Uh, showing them, I was actually playing a Kramer bass that was tuned down to D and showing them how it sort of changes the fretboard and can suggest different ideas. And I play the boom, doo doo, chicka, da da da. I was just like, hold on one second. I had my Radio Shack recorder, press record, went through it once, continued with the lesson, and brought that riff into uh, the rehearsal of a fledgling Rage Against the Machine oh, the wow. next day. Bulls on Parade on Saturday Night Live. It said you were originally going to play two songs, mm -hmm. but you were cut to one when the band attempted to hang uh, an upside down American flag on the amplifiers. That is correct. We that had, is, as part of our stage setup, we had upside down American flags on the amplifiers, a sign of signal for distress. Distress, yes. And uh, um, the, the, the host that night was Steve Forbes, who had just was a Republican presidential huh. candidate and billionaire who has Forbes magazine, wow. who's not a very good comedic actor, but he was the, he was the host that night. And they, they told us because the sponsors might be offended by the flag, Steve oh, Forbes okay. was the host, you have to take him down. So we took him down during rehearsal. We put him up right before we went on stage. There was a fight on the stage. Their stage hand hands were stronger than our stage hands and managed to pull them down and we played the one song and then there was an incident or two backstage but we were asked to leave the building we didn't get to play a second song uh you know we know the sleep now in the fire video caused sure. the uh new york stock exchange doors to close and yep. the band to be ex escorted yeah. escorted from the site that's a it gentle said it was that's a gentle word for what <laughs> escorted. it said it was due uh not just because of your presence, but due to an altercation that happened. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we, Michael Moore had just, he directed the video for Sleeping yeah. on the Fire. Uh, he had just been arrested uh, because the band did not have a permit to play on the city sidewalk where we were playing. Okay. So he was arrested and he told us to take the New York Stock Exchange and we rushed through the doors and were expelled and they shut down capitalism for a few hours uh, <laughs> because of Rage Against the Machine. They closed the riot doors in the building and that was the end of that. So that, the incident was that we were, they weren't necessarily related, but we were shooting a video nearby and there was a police problem there, so we decided to cause a second police problem. Okay, that's the story I always heard. I never heard of like an altercation. There was no like, altercation. Okay, though. gotcha. No so that's some fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, is it crazy to look back at that video and see the Trump? Yes, for it's crazy. I mean, it was a, of course brought to my attention during the 2016 campaign, and and so we share some responsibility. And so my apologies to all of you. <laughs> all right, last one for you. Uh, in October t 2009, yourself among other musicians sued the U.S. government for the declassification of all documents relating to 
the use of music in interrogations at Guantanamo Bay. That's correct, because That's they correct. were using Rage Against the Machine songs for torture, and we wanted to put a stop to it, and we were unsuccessful in our lawsuit, but we at least had to raise our hands and say, we know this is happening, and we're 100% opposed to it. Yeah. Do you think you uh, achieved at least a bit of what you wanted but by just getting the word yeah, out Yeah, Yeah, well, I mean, we, did, we took the step that we could take, and by speaking out against it, so that was what we needed to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Tom, thank you so much for giving me your time today. Of course. I appreciate it thank so much. Thank you both much. for much having me. The new uh, Atlas Underground record out now. Check it out. A lot of rock on there. The idea is to create a brand new alloy of metal and EDM and guitar shreddery for 2018. Perhaps you'll enjoy it and write something false about it on my Wikipedia page. And then we'll sort that out the next time I'm here. That's right. Atlas Underground, everyone. <laughs> Pick that thing up.